Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. This week, I got to chat with actor and filmmaker Alan Maldonado. He's an incredibly busy guy. You've seen him as Curtis on Blackish, Bobby on The Last OG, or the original Honey Nuts on You're the Worst. But he also runs his own streaming app that features short films, as well as being a producer and filmmaker himself. We talk about all that and more, and I hope you enjoy. Hey, how's it going, Les? Going great, Alan. Thank you so much for taking out the time today. I, I, I say this every time that you know you're everybody's time's value, but you are a busy, busy man. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it. In, uh, I had seen you as, as Cousin Bobby on The Last OG. I did not put together somehow that you are the original Honey Nuts from You're the Worst. Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I am. One of the things I, in doing my research, uh, I, I don't know if anybody should go Google and read a couple of interviews with you uh, because your positivity and your attitude about work ethic and success is is inspiring. Uh, one of the things I'd heard you say was that success was kind of step one, that as soon as you declared yourself like, this is what I'm going towards, you've already put yourself on that path of success. Can you talk a little bit about what it was like to first feel like you, when did you really feel like you announced that to the world or, or when you really turned your focus towards entertainment and acting and all the things you, you knew you really wanted to do? Um, I guess, for me, it's, um, I guess the phrase or the, the, the comment that I think you're speaking on is, um, I think your greatest success is the day you decide to do something. Yes. Um, uh, just because nothing, nothing happens without that day or that moment or that position in your heart or that decision in your heart. They say, you know what, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it, give it everything that I got. That is your greatest success and everything else is um, birthed from that. But for me, um, success is a, is, a, is a journey. It's a um, it's a mindset rather than anything material or even mouse, even if it's even a milestone. Success is mental um, just because there's so many things that you can account for it as success. It doesn't always have to be material or um, even just like, oh, I completed something. Um, that's what's great about it. Um, and I think people that are very successful understand that because it helps you get through the ups and downs and not feel like um, you, you haven't accomplished anything. It, even when things aren't as you know, things are bad or things aren't as good as they used used to be, you continue on just because you understand what success is. Yeah, I, th I think when I was younger, I had a, a naive idea that succeeding or being ready would mean that I wouldn't run into obstacles or have problems that stopped me. And so then when a problem it naturally arose in whatever I was pushing towards, I'd think, oh, I wasn't ready, see. And, and now I... Now when I when I feel good about my projects, I, I don't feel like there won't be problems. I feel like I'll be ready to handle whatever happens. It'll be this, you know, cool thing we can figure out our way around. Uh, and, and you know, feeling ready for those challenges feels like a, a lot more mature uh, sense of of succeeding for me. I know you almost had your career cut short uh, early on uh, with a. Uh, car accident. Can you talk about what it was like, uh, not just getting yourself back up to to well and walking around in a normal life, but but to redouble your efforts back towards the the dream that got interrupted there? Oh uh, wow! Um, you know, my car it, it goes back like, it, to I think what you just said prior to the question. Um, you know. After, you know, when the accident happened, it really changed a lot of perspectives for me. Um, it was, my battle wasn't, my battle after the accident wasn't physical. Um, because I always, 
and my heart knew I'd be okay. Um, I never didn't have to have surgery or anything. I knew I had to just, you know, I had to sit still. <laughs> and I think um, that was God's way of making me sit still for a little bit because <laughs> he knows I don't sit still. Um, and um, so the physical part wasn't, I guess, the challenge. It was the time thing. But what was challenging was just perspective. And for me, what happened was after that accident, I came to an understanding that life is nor negative. Life is not negative or positive, it just is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's your choice, it's your decision to decide on which spectrum you want to live on. Um, being that my accident could have been seen as a humongous negative event of me, you know, ending my my sister young the wrestlers, uh I like I went broke, I went out, you know, my my body wasn't the same, all of these things I could have pointed out as a negative or I could choose for it to be a positive, like um being fearless in life, um, having a deeper understanding and a connection with God, uh knowing that nothing on this earth can kill me. Um, when it's my time to go, it's my time to go. Uh scientifically I should shouldn't be here if it was built off of that i was hit by a bmw roaster going 65 miles per hour walking um not inside of a car flew in the air landed on my face um there's people that just go to sleep and don't wake up so Mm -hmm. um all these all of these perspectives began to swarm in my head and really um transform me into the person that i am the fearless individual um that I've, I've become in this business and in life and with my family and uh, just a deeper understanding of my purpose came from it all. And again, that's, that's, that's my choice to look at everything in a positive way rather than focus on the negative. I, uh, I assume you've, you've got to at least be somewhat personally interested in the mechanics of how the entertainment industry works to have, set up such a, an empire, honestly, uh, in terms of, of your music label, the short film, the short film app, the uh, demo kids, all these different uh, things that you do. Um, did it stem from just a kind of a bad paraphrase of Gandhi, of, you know, got to write the role you want to play in the in the world, or and did, did you did you see a need uh, for a, a music label that wasn't representing what you wanted represented, or or writing the the script you wanted to be in, or it was? Uh, I guess I, I'll say this: it wasn't it wasn't as, it wasn't as deep as that. It was more of um, uh, I guess the deeper level of it all is this: is that uh, I tell everybody to do what they love and figure out how to make money from it, not the other way around. Uh, and I think a lot of people get, you know, society life is, you know, it, it could be a challenge and sometimes you can get lost and find yourself in a, in a job or doing something that you don't love. Um, but then you have to turn that into an investment to get to finally to a position where you can do what you love and earn money from it. So all the things that I've, I'm doing, I said I was going to do when I was 17 years old. Um, I've always, uh, loved music. I was heavy into music at one point. Like I, I personally have recorded over three, three hundred songs that are, you know, in wrote in circulation on TV, on various TV shows and networks since for the past eight, nine years, maybe ten, uh, maybe ten. Um, uh, I've turned my focus more into television writing and screenplays and things now. Um, but uh, everything that I'm doing and involved in, I. I I thoroughly love and um, in the goal and, the, and my driving force is to continue that, but also figure out a way to make money for it. So it's the win-win all the way around. That never will I find a day where I'm like I'm 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 at work. I'm just doing what I love. You've uh, not just the short films and, and things that you've gotten to have of such a heavy creative hand in. But you've been involved in other people's spectacular projects as well. Um, I know often in your career, you can't pick and choose necessarily what the next job is. It's the, you know, this is the opportunity offered, 
But when you look back, do you see a, a theme to the work or to the type of roles that you like or the type of stories you like to tell? Uh, well, I mean, I guess in in contrary to what um, contrary to most people's beliefs, uh, you you do have control over what roles you can um, are opportunities that will run your way. Uh, being that um, it's all upon how you market yourself, I approach everything from a business perspective when it comes to my career. Um, I personally am building a brand that is uh, the funny tough guy. A lot of my roles um, fit in that spectrum, fit in that world, whether it's sometimes it's uh, a little heavy on the funny side, sometimes a little heavy on the tough guy side. Um, depending on the particular film, uh, whether it's a drama or a comedy, I'm able to do, I've been blessed to be able to do both. So um, with that being said, that's due to the marketing and the way I present myself. As these are the things that I love. Um, this is, uh, I guess, the closest to who I am, and I rather play. I rather play in my strengths than play in my weaknesses. Um, I'm an artist through and through. But these are the things again. Back to I do what I love. I love action films. I love comedy, and I love dramatic, dramatic work. So. Everything that I built with my career says that. So eventually, when you think of Alan Maldonado, these are the things that you think of, um, resulting in the roles that I want to do and I want to play. People will begin to create for me because that's the image that they see me as. When it comes to to format of shows, I mean, I know you've acted in everything from soap operas, just the, the king of multi-camera, to single camera sitcoms and but your personal interest in short films and and developing a better distribution model for them is there something particular to that format that that you enjoy uh in your storytelling yeah i think it's underappreciated uh i think it's um it's an art it's a gift um for someone to be able to tell and tell a story and not just tell a story but um making an impactful story in in short form, being that it's easy to finally convince someone to feel a certain way if you have two hours. Um, it's, it's, easy, it's a lot harder to pitch and sell something in, in, in more like an elevator pitch that, mm-hmm. is, that is a short film. You know, an elevator pitch... Uh, is short, sweet to the point, and you get you get the reaction that you want from whoever you're selling it to, and that's what a short film is. And I think that takes an actual uh, gift and skill to do. So I just seen looked at the landscape and saw how it was so heavily underappreciated that I wanted to do something to add exposure to these incredible filmmakers, thus creating Everybody Digital. Um, and recreating a structure and, and, and a business for short films that has that has hasn't existed. Do you happen to remember uh, what the first short film that you saw that you thought this is going to vanish after this film fest? Uh, there's got to be something done about this. Well, it was a um, it was it was the, the, the app was built off of uh, my own heartbreak. I had a short film that I created myself that I put my you know. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears. In um, being that at the time I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of money, so I put everything into this film, um, which wasn't a lot, but it was all that I had, and it came out incredible. It was, for me, it was a turning point of my filmmaking because uh, it was a film that I was actually, I guess, proud of. And as an artist, you always find and poke holes, and <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you're sensitive about your work, so. You never like, oh, this is good, and, but this one is like, oh, wait a minute! I feel like I felt I turned a corner in the style and the level of work that I'm capable of doing, and began to do the film festival run and had some great success, uh, won some awards, and once we got to the end of our run, which is, you know usually lasts about 12, 15 months, 
it just fell off a cliff. There was no home. There was no, there was no life after, you know, film festivals, and yeah. that that bothered me. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. I sit at at film fest, and you know, everybody spends the next year kind of waiting for the features to trickle out on various platforms or or into real theater, you know, into theaters on their real run. Uh, but the short films are gone uh, so often. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I got to really applaud you for seeing the, the, you know, no, I don't want this to happen to my short film. That's that's great. Yeah, and what I'm what I'm very excited about what we're doing with with everybody digital uh, moving forward in this year is that we're really um, looking to help our filmmakers go to the next level. Being that uh, I want everybody digital to be the home of uh, I guess transition. Um, being that a lot of our original programming that we're doing, our key focus is to um, create short films that are also proof of concepts that we'll be able to package due to my relationships on the writing side and writing for major networks, and I'm developing major projects with networks, um, to be able to make that transition from short film to, say, a TV show or a feature film. Uh, from the short film, and I want to be able to help other filmmakers um, that are uh, a part of the Everybody Digital family make that same transition. So that's going to be our key focus this, um, you know, entire year is to make that transition with one of our projects, whether it be our originals or either with uh, one of the filmmakers that have uh, contributed. I mean, that is um, um, selected to be part of uh, Everybody Digital. Um, either or, that's our main goal. Man, that's really cool. That's really exciting because I know exactly. What, I mean, that that's a seems like an ingenious pipeline to, you know, from short content to shepherding somebody into that bigger project. Yes. Well, thanks so much for taking out the time to talk to me today. Uh, I tell I would recommend everybody go check out Last OG or uh, or your role on Blackish or any any of your work. Uh, yeah, I will man. always have an affinity for you're the worst. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, man, you're the worst, man, the worsties, man, so, um, I, I, I loved everybody over there from Stephen down, man, it was a, it was a great experience, unfortunately, I was shooting the last OG at the same time during the last two seasons that I was unable to be a part of the, the season finale, but, um, but an incredible, incredible. They had, they had fun, uh, dealing with that absence. Yeah, man, yeah, they, 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 they had some fun with it. <laughs> Well, man, have a great rest of your day. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast and a member of the Electric Sweater Podcast Network. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to thetvdudes.com and electricsweater.com. I'm Grant Davis. Thanks for listening.